Good afternoon. <coughs> uh, the last lecture we are talking about read write memory or random access memory and the difference between read write memory and read only memory also we saw. Read only memory is mostly used for storing permanent data like tables, lookup tables and all that. Also we have seen this use of read only memories in the combinational logic design. Read write memory has the, the, it's a, they are volatile memories that means whatever information you put will be available as long as the power is on and the power is off the memory gets erased and you have to reload it. And we saw what is inside the memory, read write memory, how it is made basically using, we also saw two types of uh, read write memory or random access, one is static, other is dynamic. Dynamic is generally made of capacitors, semiconductor capacitors, MOS capacitors. They are, they lose charge, so they need constant refreshing. Whereas, static memory is basically the building block is a flip-flop. <coughs> we saw the way in which it is written and read, we also saw the timing cycles. So, the read write memory has address lines, let us say n address lines, m data lines, input, let us say m, so there will be m data out lines, in addition there will be a read write, Whether you are reading from here or writing, it is called read write bar, that means when it is 1 or high, will be reading from the co content of the memory already stored. When you put a 0 on this line low, you can write into the memory. In addition, there is an input called memory select or enable. We will call it select input. Because only when this is high, enable, read write function will take place. If it is not enabled, which is low, then the read write function will not, we will not be able to, we cannot, we will not be able to do the reading or writing. We also saw sort of, sort of about decode, decoding memories, decoding decoders, we have address lines, how they are distributed inside, we have to decode them. For example, in this case, this is 2 power n words each of m bits this capacitor the memory and n line, n address lines add to cut at to 2 power n words, so we need decoders, we saw this. These are word lines and they go and select a particular row of bits which is called a word. <coughs> we also saw how to decrease the number of the logic required in decoder by number of um, AND gates and number of inputs AND gates by what is known as two dimensional decoding. We saw that. Divide the address lines into two and do column address lines, row address lines, column address lines will be done by column decoder, row address line will be decoded by a row decoder, and then that will save the number of gates. We also saw what is known as 3D, I mean not 3D, 
मल्टीप्लेक्स एड्रेसिंग the number of address lines becomes very large we don't want to dedicate so many pins for address so we have divided into two first row address is placed that is in a buffer then the column address is placed that comes in a buffer and these two buffers will just select the actual row and the column from which we read today i will give an example of memory design supposing i have um 1k words memory size given size of memory 1k times 4 that means 1k locations each as each with 4 bits and i require 4k times 8 given size of memory is 1k by 4 required size is 4k by 8 so first of all this how many how many chips will be required 4k by 8 divided by 1k by 4 is the number of chips required to 4 times 2 8 so i need eight of these eight pieces i need in eight pieces now how do you organize it so i have four 4k requires 12 address lines 4k requires 12 address lines one k requires only 10 address lines it means each one k chip i have 10 address lines call it 0 to A zero to A nine, and then this is four bits data in. Four bits data out. But I want eight bit data in and eight bit data out, and I have this select for each of these memories. And I have a read-write bar for each of these memories. We have seen how to use these inputs: read-write bar, select input, all that in the last lecture. Data in and data out, and address lines. Today, what I am going to show you is how to use this 1K chip, eight numbers, and build a memory of size 4K by eight. I already said we need eight chips, so we'll organize them like this. Each of them will have ten address lines. A zero to A nine address. Address will go here, go here, here. It will also go here. 
here all the eight chips will require this address. Four bit data in, four bit data out, but I need eight bit data in and eight bit data out. So what I'll do is data in I divide into two four bits into this. Eight bit data four will go here and four will go here. The same four is a data in four bits, four bits, four bits. Other four bit data will go into this. So, data in eight lines, four of these lines will go into this chip, other four. So, this is data line D0 to D7, D0 to D3 will go here, and D4 to D7. We'll go here. Read write also is common. All the eight chips will get this. This is read write bar, bar. So when you select there are totally 4k words required, each of them only has 1k words. So I now have 4 different levels and each level there are only 4 bits are available as input and output. So another 4 bits will go into this chip. So similarly data out 4. Other 4 will come from here. Uh, very messy, so I'll put here. I'll show here. This is four bit data out. Four data out. This four will be D zero to D three. This 4 will be D4 to D7. They will all be combined again. So 4 bit data in, data out, D0 to D3. Other four bits coming from here, they will also be common. Okay. 
So each is a 1k by 4 ram So totally I get 8 bits output, 8 bits input because 8 bit inputs is divided into d0, d3 into this, d4 to d7 into this, similarly in all this. Read write line is common for all the chips. 10 bit address lines each one of them but then the other 12, 4k chip will require, requires 12 address lines. I have only used 10, so other 2 address lines which will be A11, A10 and A11 address lines. We will go through the 2 to 4 decoder, 2 lines input, 4 lines output. This will go to select 0, select 1, select 2, select 3. So each of these chips have <coughs> select, each of the chips have select lines. So this four, uh, four lines, this select line go here, there's a select line here. Select line here. Line here. This select comes from the 3, select 3, this comes from select 2, maybe I will put a different color chalk. This is select 3, this is coming from here, select 3. Select 2. Select one, select zero. So select three goes here. The same select three will go into this because this gives the first four bits of the output or input. It takes This takes the same next four bits. Now similarly, this is select two. This is select two. This is select one. This is select one. This is select zero. This is select zero. I have shown only from here, the other four outputs come from here. This goes into this, the other four comes here. This, this four, this four should come from here or for D0, D3, this one is D0, D3. So this is D4 to, actually this should come from here. So this is D4 to D7, D4 to D7, or D0, D3 rather, D0 to D3, D0 to D3, D0 to D3. So what have I done in this? Nothing big. Supposing we are given a 1k memory, 4 bits word length, you want to use it, all you need is 10 address lines, simple. Q 10 address lines, 
address 4 bit data in 4 bit data out. Read write and select enable. Now exactly everything is kept same all the 8 chips because 8 times we need because 4k is 4 times 1k but this is only 4 bits we are wide whereas I want 8 bits wide. I have given 1k by 4 and I am asked to design a 4k by 8. So, 4 chips for each of these and each of these 2 chips. So, first 1k d0 to d3 comes from here d4 to d7 comes from here. Second 1k d0 to d3 come here d4 to d7 comes from here. Third 1k d0 to d3 comes here d4 to d7 comes from here. Fourth 1k d0 to d3 comes here d4 to d7 comes from here that is it. Now, so when you have 8 address lines or 8 data lines, you connect 4 data lines here, another 4 data lines here, input. Same 4 data lines as input here, here, here. The next 4 data lines as input here, 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 here. Now, address is common for all of them for 1k. Read rate is common. Data out next 4 bits come from input data, next 4 bits go into this, uh, go into this, next 4 bits come as here as output. So, there is no difference, the two major differences you need to note that is all. From here to this drawing, there are only two things. One is 8 address lines I am dividing into 2, 4 address lines, I mean 8 data lines I am dividing into 2, 4 data lines. One set of four data lines goes to these four chips as input as an output. The second four data lines as input go into this as output come from here. So that is very clear. Second thing you need to notice, I wanted 4K whereas this can only give me 1K. So I need four such chips. So these two address lines I not use, A10 and A11 will be given to a 2 to 4 decoder which will give me 4 outputs. First output corresponds to the first set of 2 chips. Second select line corresponds to the second set of 2 chips. Third corresponds to the third set of 2 chips. Fourth to the fourth set of three chips, 2 chips. It is all there is, nothing more. Now, this is how the design memory. For example, if you have a 64K memory, I mean I am only talking about RAM now, static RAMs. Dynamic RAM also same arrangement except that we need an extra circuit for refreshing. So for static memory there is no refreshing needed. So what we do is, suppose 64K is given to you, you may not have a single 64K uh, chip, you are given 16K chips, 4 of them you need. Again, if you are giving 8 bit chips and you want 16 bit words, you need 2 for each of these. So, the number of chips required has to be calculated using this formula. What is the required size? What is the given size? Required size is 4k times 8, given size is 1k times 4. So, 8. 8, how do you organize? 2, 2, 2, 2. This 2 is because of the data line being 4 and 8. Requirement is 8, 8 data lines input as 8 data lines output, whereas each chip can only take 4 data lines as input and 4 data lines as output. That is why you need these two pairs, pair, this pair, this pair, this pair. The other 4 chips is required to co complete the entire map of memory from 0 to 4K. For that I need to have selector lines which are different for each one of these. This pair of selector lines this selector line goes to this pair chips, this selector line goes to this pair chips, goes to these two pairs, this pair of chips, this select goes to this pair of chips. Otherwise, read write is required for all the chips. Um, 
selector line you have to connect this way, that is all. This is how you design a memory, this was an example I gave you, so that you know exactly what we have done. Now we have completely understood static memories, I mean mm, uh, read write memories or random access memories as against ROM which is used to program, it comes from factory programmed if it is a table like cost table, sign table or you can use it for putting values which are not going to change, so it is non-volatile, usually used for storing tables. RAM is very used for data which is going to be put and retrieved, but it will go when you remove the power, this is called volatile memories, the other one is called non-volatile memories. And within this, of course, we saw static and dynamic, but dynamic I didn't spend much time. I told you that it is made up of capacitors. Capacitors need refreshing, so the extra circuit is involved. Whereas this do not require, because this is basically a latch. D, uh, each one of them is a D latch. That's all. And then addressing, we sort of put different types of decoding, uh, two-dimensional, multiplex and all that. With this I complete the memory design and almost all the topics I had given in my outline except I want to spend some time on hardware. Now what all we have seen until now are symbols. So there is a gate or a multiplexer or memories, ROM, RAM, state machines, flip flops. We know functionally what the uh, their functional description. We know how to write truth table. We know how to write function table. We know write how write how to write excitation tables. All of them are logically, what we have done so far is a logical representation of everything. We never talked about what are these the bars, the black boxes. These boxes are hardware, electronic items. And no electronic items will item will work without applying power to it. So generally what we have seen is we have not looked at the power aspects. Of course, we talked about a little bit of delay, how delay comes. We talked about set up time, hold time and all that, but generally a chip requires a power input and power output, a battery, I mean a DC voltage is input or source and ground. So we need to have two terminals extra. Let us take a simple example of NAND gate. logic, I will call these logic families, 
What do you mean the logic families will see? Suppose I have an AND gate which I described like this A B F is A and B or I can write a truth table. This is complement of AND. And for this, this is 1 rest of them are 0. So, for NAND, it is 1, 1, 1, 0. Functionally, all right. You know how to use it in circuits. How to design circuits using NAND gates. And NAND gate is only one simple example. There are other things we have talked about. We talked about different uh, MSIs, medium scale integrated circuit, we talked about full adders, uh, we talked about um, 4 bit adders, we talked about flip flops, latches, flip flops, counters, everything, memories. Now, in actual practice, this is in a semiconductor material, this is IC chip, as they call it. This will have Inputs, we will call this input 1, 2. So, 1, 2 are the two inputs, and then there will be an output. Usually, four NAND gates in one chip. So, 3 is this output, 4, 5. 6 is output, 6. Um, this is not exactly any pin configuration, I am just giving an arbitrarily, 4, 5, 6, let us call it 7, 8, output 9. And 11, put 12, and I need two more pins, 13 and 14, to supply VCC and ground. Actually, it is not 0, actually, ground is not 14. I think one is 7, the other is 14. 1, 2, 3, 4, this is 8 and, eight and 9, 10, 11 and 12. So, 13 is this, 14 is ground, 14 is ground or it's 70 VCC or other way, does not matter. That means I need to give power supplies, 5 volts. So, I should know whenever I use a gate, how much voltage can I, what is the power supply required for the gate or not only gate. Adder, full adder, memory chip, flip flop, counter, register. So, you have to go to the data sheet. There are lots of companies who make these chips. All these companies have put all the material, all the ICs they manufacture in their websites. And you look for a particular IC of a particular manufacturer, you go to the manufacturer's website, look for the particular IC and look at the configuration of the pins, what are the input pins, what are the output pins, what is the power supply required, which pin has the power supply. This is a 14 pin. Thank you, they call it. So, we can find that easily, it is on the go, um, websites, computer. But what you should know is, what is the input voltage required? When you say high level, low level. So, I need to define the following things. V i h, what is the maximum voltage I can give? Minimum, what is the minimum value of input? 
V i h is V i h minimum V o h minimum V i l maximum V o l maximum What is the voltage you can give? input and still maximum value you can give at the input and call it a low voltage. The low is 0, we assumed 0 is low, 5 is high. If 5 is VCC, 0 is ground. If you assume this, we assume 5 volts is required for the input to be high. and 0 volts is required with the input to be low, same thing with the output. Now, it is not necessary. We can apply a voltage, low voltage as input, still can be greater than 0, U O L maximum. And V O L low voltage maximum output, it has to be output, it can be greater than 0. So, only V I H minimum. What is the high voltage you apply at the input and still call it a high? So, it can be less than 5 VIH. This also can be less than 5. Mm. I think one is, many. yeah, both can be less than 5. So, typically, there are three types, many types of gates. RTL. PPL, all these are not used now. Today, most widely used family is CMOS. There are also what are known as TTL gates and ECL gates. For each of these gates, we should know what is the maximum voltage we can give. We will write a table. TTL, CMOS, TCL. I will tell you what is each one of them in a minute. So, nominally, high is 5 volts. In this case, it is minus 5.2 volts. VOL maximum, we call it maximum output low, low output it will give you a 0.8 volts, you cannot exceed 0.8 volts and still call it high, low, VOL, output cannot be more than 0.8 the VOL maximum can be greater than 0, can go up to 0 0.8, 0 0.4, 1 1.7. VI, VOH minimum. It has to be 2.7 volts, 4.2 volts, 
minus 0.9 volts. PAL max 0.8 1 volt minus 1.4 I it's all available in standard textbooks or in Google. Don't, don't worry. I'm going to explain what they mean. Don't worry about exact values. The values may be available anywhere. I call it VO is high high level. Is it VO VI? VO I mean high voltage, low voltage. Low voltage, as I said, nominally zero five. As an example, nowadays there are three point three volts, zero to three point three, zero to one point two. All that is available today. So when I say VH five volts. I should give at least 2.7 volts. Okay. Volts is what it meant by this VOL, VOH minimum. If you go, if it goes below this, it will not be recognized as a high value. VOL maximum on the lower side output VIH input as high up to 2 volts will be recognized. VIH, this is output voltage. Output. VI input maximum 5 volts. This is an output side. This is input side. Again, it is nominally 5 volts. VI. But on the output side, it can be as low as 2 volts. If you are giving as the input up to 2 volts lower, 5 volts is nominal, it can go down up to 2 volts and still the gate will recognize as the low voltage. I mean high high level. The output side is supposed to give you 5 volts, but can give you at least 2.7 volts, it has to be more than that. This is an example. Similarly, on the low side, VIH. P O H. This is the output side. V O H minimum I already written. V I H minimum is two volts. And V O L maximum is point three eight volts. This is nominally zero, up to 0.8 volts. You can give, and still it will be called a low level output. On the input side,
V i L is supposed to be 0, but it can up to 8 volts will be recognized as a low value. So, I can give up to 0.8 volts as input and still call it low level logic 0. I will get at least uh, I, I can get a maximum of 0.8 volts and the output still it will be branded as a low voltage output low level. On the high side even though it is supposed to be 5 volts I will get at least 2.7 in the input side even 2 volts is enough to be recognized as a high value. This type of thing is for each of these gates. TTL gates are made of transistor, transistor logic, CMOS complementary metal oxide semiconductors, ECL stands for emitter coupled logic. Now, where broadly these characteristics difference is, this is supposed to be high speed, non saturation logic, these are called. This is supposed to be low power. This is supposed to be medium power and medium speed, low power, low speed. Until recently, these TTL gates were used extensively for most of the applications. When you want very low output, very low uh, power dissipation, use CMOS gates, but it will be a little slower. And ECL you use when you want very high speed, but power will be high. But not anymore, these two gates, CMOS has increased so much, improved so much. We also get low power and low speed, I mean low power and high speed, low power dissipation, high speed. And there is no, mostly it is now most of the designs in digital logic, it, they are done using the CMOS gates now. So, you should know when you say I am applying a low voltage or zero level signal to the gate. Depending on the family, you should know what is the maximum value you can give and still call it a low at the input and what is the maximum value, minimum value you can expect at the output side. Similarly, for each one of these gates, output side also same thing high level what is the maximum, what is the minimum you can apply and call it high and maximum you can apply and call it low. These are different from input and output side, but these things are extreme cases, we do not normally do it, only when it is extremely noisy conditions, this type of low things will come. There are a few more things I would like to define here before I close this. So, current input, current output is also important. How much current is required at each gate at the low level, high level? How much current will be output from each gate, high level, high level? For TTL gates, I O H current and is high output, I O L current and the output, output when it is low, current in the input when it is high, current in the input when it is low, 
IOH is 400 milli amperes. 400, I'm sorry, 400 microamperes. IAH is 40 microamperes. Input side. IOL is 16 milliamperes. IOL. IAL is um, 1.6 milliamperes. So this is how you find out what is known as a fan out. We already defined fan out. Fan out is as identical gates, which can number of gates, identical gates you can connect to the output of a given gate. So fan out is calculated as IOH sorry IIH or IOL. You have to calculate both and take which one is the smallest. So in this case, it happens to be 10 for TTL, 400 divided by 40 or 16 divided by 1.6. This is called fan out. Then there is a delay. When you apply a signal, it does not immediately, output does not change. So I will keep this because I need to add some more things into this. When you change from 0 to 1, output changes let us say inverter 1 to 0. So, the delay is the time it takes from mid level here to the mid level here on TP HL. Similarly, in the output side, when you go from 1 to 0, it takes a little more time. You go from 0 to 1, TPLH. Time it takes for the output to change from 1 to 0 after a signal is applied to the input. Time it takes for the input output to change from 1 to 0, or 0 to 1 after the input is applied. So the propagation delay is the delay is the average of these two. That is how you should consider in speed and all that. Supposing I told you this is very slow gate, means this delay is more. So to come back to this table, I already cal told you what a fan out is. It's typically 10 for TTL, very large because it takes no current at the input, CMOS gates. That's about 10 for the ECL gates. Delay is about 30 microseconds or nanoseconds nowadays. Ten to thirty. And 48 nanoseconds. Oh, okay, okay, okay. This is not correct. Uh, this is not delay. Delay is about 10 nanoseconds.
about 1 nanosecond, slightly more here, 15 nanoseconds. Let us say 2 nanoseconds. Power dissipation is I average times PDD at VCC. So, what is the maximum current or what is the minimum current? All that you calculate how much current is takes average. So, power is 20. PDE is 20 milliwatts, almost 0 CMOS and it takes maximum 4 milliwatts. But what is important is the product of these two, PD delay, power delay product is call it. So, whether a gate is good enough, it is not only it should consume low power, it should be fast. So, the product of these two is what is considered most importantly is 30, this is 10 to 30, this is 48. This is a number, actually, it is a joules, pico joules. Energy. So basically, what we have seen is these gates require power supply. We should know what power supply to apply based on the information given by the manufacturer's data sheet. It will give you the information about the voltage to be applied. VCC and ground. It also tells you which pins are the input pins, which pins are the output pins. It will also tell you what is considered as input voltage, zero level, up to what value. In I input voltage high level, at least what value? The input and output side you should know. That is important and based on that you also calculate the fan out, how many gates can be connected or similar gates connected to the output of one of single gate of the switch type. You can also find out what is the delay, propagation delay, whether the gate is fast enough for replication. If you put a ripple counter for example, each, each flip flop is going to take uh, delay and then how many delays it is going to have before we can start the counting again. If it is too slow, then we may not be able to do it. We also calculated the fan out, delay, power dissipation, power delay product and there is one more thing which is called noise margin. The output of a gate is fed as input to the next gate. High level output of one gate is fed as a high level input of another gate. In that process, we may drop some voltage. S similarly, low level output of a gate will go as a low level input of another gate. In that process, it can take some noise. How much noise is allowed? It's called noise margin. Noise margin is VOH. Maximum output voltage, high level, minus VIH, input voltage. 
An output voltage of one gate is fed as input voltage on another gate, both high level, or VIL. Input voltage low level is fed as the, uh, I mean the other way, VOL, the output voltage low level is fed as the input voltage low level in another gate. So, this is what amount of voltage it can drop and still be considered a high level. Output of one gate high we are feeding as an out high of next gate, there might be some drop. We have an input voltage, uh, low level output voltage, we are feeding it as an input voltage of another gate, it can pick up some noise on the way. Whichever is lower, called a fan in, I mean noise margin. How much noise can it tolerate this gate? Noise need not be all types of noise, it is only a dropping of the voltage is also called noise or pick up some stray voltage is also a noise. So, noise margin is for these gates, I have that somewhere here. This is slightly higher, this is lower. Again, this is only a simple introduction to because we have been dealing with this digital gates, digital logic, or digital design for a whole semester. But always we have used symbols and boxes for flip flops and symbols for gates. We design counters, we design flip flops, then state machines, we have designed combination logic, we design adders, subtractors, we have designed state machines using state graph using ASM. We never thought about the actual IC, the electronic part that goes into all these things. But all these designs we discuss have, have to have, have to use ICs which are manufacturers are available, many manufacturers, many, many companies, manufacturers make these ICs all types of ICs and you have to look at the actual website of the manufacturer and look at the all the products that are available and each product has a data sheet which tells you what is the voltage you have to connect to the, what are the pins, a number of pins available, which pins are considered as inputs. For example, NAND gate I said four in, four NAND gates in one IC. Each is a two input NAND gate, so there are eight inputs of eight input eight pins required as input and four input uh, pins available as output, and two old two lines two pins one for VCC and one for ground minimum fourteen. Like that in every IC you need to know the pin uh, you need to know the pin configuration. Then you should know what is the voltage to applied power power supply voltage, which pin and which pin has to be grounded. Then you should know what is considered as input level high, input level low for that family. What is considered as output level high, output level low. 
that determines the noise allowed when you draw connect an output voltage of a high voltage output from one gate as high voltage input to another gate how much voltage can be dropped. Similarly, when you consider the low level output voltage connect as a low level input voltage how much voltage it can it pick up that is called noise margin. Then from the currents and voltages, uh, currents, input current and output current, how many gates can this drive, similar identical gates. So the output current available, input current required, high level as well as low level. High level output current uh, uh, given out, high level input current required, ratio is the noise margin. Same thing is low level, low level current given out, low level current required ratio. Sometimes they are same, sometimes they are different. If they are different, you have to take the lower one, fan out. <coughs> fan in is the number of inputs the gate, three input gate is a fan three, a fan in of three. So we talked about noise margin, we talked about fan in, fan out talked about voltage level requirements at low level, high level as input and output. The speed, speed is the, there is a, when you apply a signal, output does not change immediately, it takes some time. The difference between this time you apply the signal to the time the response starts, it is called delay. Again it can be different from 0 to 1 transition or 1 to 0 transition. You take the 2 and then take the average. Power dissipation, the voltage that is supplied to the average current consumed, that is power dissipation, how much power is dissipated, whether how much power is required, how many gates can it contain for a given sub power supply and all that you can calculate. So this is a table as I said, it is a rough indication only. These things are more, uh, more detail available in the uh, and Google, all these nominal voltage of a gate, maximum voltage is considered as a low, minimum voltage considered as high at the output, maximum voltage considered as input, low, minimum voltage is considered high at the input and each family, TTL, there are only three families are considering, all of there are lots of other families, some of them are very modern and recent specifically used for certain applications. Lots of other older families are there, DTL, RTL and all that we are not, they are not used anymore. These are the three major families actually, TTL was the family which was used until recently. But now CMOS is now the one which is preferred. CMOS has low power dissipation, lower speed is supposed to be but now the speed is design has been improved, advances in technology. We also have moderate uh, speeds. Similarly here, power requirement is medium, speed is medium. Very high speed if you want, but power will be high in called ECL, called emitter coupled logic. It is called non-saturation logic. So we calculate all that fan out, delay, power. The product of power delay and power and delay, this is the, the measure. This is about the same for these two. ECL is higher, but you want speed, you have to use it. So this is only, as I said, a very brief introduction to actual hardware or logic families which are used in all these gates. So with this, I am now concluding the course. Um, I think I have given 27 lectures, each of one and a half hours duration, it is all in the recorded available in the website. I have given five assignments, one or two more I will add. We have got a whole range of digital design concepts. 
sorry for number, number systems, number conversions, codes, we talked about mm, parity, we talked about basic gates, we talked about universal gate which is NAND and NOR, Boolean functions, how to implement Boolean functions, Boolean algebra and how to reduce given function using corner maps and we designed combination logic for different applications like adders, parity generators. We talked about one's complement, two's complement, subtraction by adding two's complement of a number. We talked about one bit adder, four bit adders, then BCD adders. We talked about subtractors. We talked about multiplexers, medium scale integrated circuits, multiplexers, decoders, seven segment displays and all that. We did a lot of designs in the class as well as in the tutorial sheets, a lot of assignments are there. Then we moved on to sequential logic. Sequential logic is different from combination logic. Combination logic, the inputs decide the output at a given instant of time. Sequential logic, the output, at the present output is decided by the present input as well as the previous output or previous input. Then we came to the concept of flip-flops, clocking, latches first and then the clocking, different types of flip-flops, use of these flip-flops, encounters, we talked about various types of counters, up counter, down counter, starting at any point, any count and ending at any count, all those things we decided, we discussed. Then we went to what is known as a synchronous counters for speed. And then from there we went on to applications of counters like registers, shift registers, uses of shift registers. Then we talked about state machines. Arbitrary count, uh, state machine has been the arbitrary count, but then you can also have an input, many inputs. So state machines and state graphs, state tables, and using the flip-flops, we need excitation table as a flip-flop, from that you can come get the excitation table of the state machine and implement it. Implementation can be using logic gates, can be multiplexers, can be programmable read-only memories. We also went to finite machines, different applications like pattern recognition, for example, identify a pattern from a series of bits, bit string. And then we talked about ASM, algorithmic state machine, which is similar to the state machine, ex, um, state graph, except it is a little more um, sort of a clear as far as hardware is concerned. And we again talked about how to design this, how to draw this ASM and uh, how to design this ASM. Hard. And we also talked about an application, state, uh, I mean, uh, couple of applications, multiplier and then traffic light controller. Then we, finally we talked about the memories random, mem uh, earlier we had talked about read-only memories with reference to combination logic, also for implementing combination logic even in sequential circuits. But these random memories or read-read memories which are also volatile memories, we talked about that, the inside, what is inside and what are the inputs required, timing diagram for reading and writing. We talked about decoding, how do you decode the address lines to access different words of a memory and we talked about two dimensional addressing, multiplex addressing and all that. Today we discussed uh, memory design given a 
requirement and given the chip size which is lower, how do you compute the number of chips required and how do you connect them. Finally, I gave you an overview of the hardware and the uh, logic level requirements in terms of currents and voltages, which is finally was required if you want to build it in a lab and test it. You need power supplies, you need uh, signal generators, oscilloscopes and all that. So you need to know what are the type of voltages and currents to be expected, in etc, etc. And how to not uh, connect more gates than required can be accommodated like, you know, you should know what is fan out, what is the power dissipation expected, what is the delay expected and all that. So with this I am signing off and I hope people who have been following it online and offline because all these courses are recorded and put on website along with the assignment sheets. So I hope it has been somewhat useful to you guys and it is as I said basically in the beginning you closely followed my NPTEL lectures on the same subject. I have added a lot of material here in terms of some of the new topics and sometimes more explanations than in NPTEL, the assignment sheets which are not in the NPTEL. I will be happy if you use this information and improve your knowledge of digital design which is a prerequisite for many advanced level courses in digital like computer organization, okay. advanced digital system design and so forth. Okay, with this I am going to sign off. Thank you for your patient listening. If you have been listening, otherwise you have been monitoring me or sort of not monitoring, sort of following me in websites. And I hope it was, it was and it is and it will be fruitful to you sometime or the other. Thank you very much.